Start button. Ooh, look at the preview. I can change the preview refresh rate to 30 frames a second. That's pretty Oh, wait. Fun. Ben, uh, did you press the record button yet? Oh, if you were going to say something insensitive about people with different colored skin, then you'd not be a good time. No. No, just <laughs> give me a sec. Okay. I totally already hit record. So, Nick, what do you want to talk about before Birdie comes back? <laughs> he could pass for pretty much anything, I think, anyway. So, I think he's exempt. He could pass for pretty much anything. That's a yeah. good call. All right. All right. Yeah. Well, folks, welcome to the Practical Pistol Show. My name's Ben, here to answer shooting questions. Mr. Nick, thank you for joining hey, us. Are you pretty pumped for nationals? You think it's going to be a good time? I'm getting pumped, yeah. Uh, my practice is, uh, I, I have not shot as much this summer as normal due to off, off the range issues, but I've been getting my uh, practice on a little bit here recently, so I'm starting to feel a little better about it. Yep. Right, did, ready you, to go. did you revisit your limited experiment ever? That was last no. year's thing, right? Uh, yeah, last year, I think. Never came back to it. Nope. Never came back to it again. If I, if I shoot limited again, it'll be for a, for a full season at least. Uh, I'm not going to do the couple of months. Thing. Right. And also joining us today. Hey, hi. <laughs> Mr. What's Alex Perdot. <laughs> we'll fucked you up, man. <laughs> yeah, man. All right. It's back. Oh, man. Back. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's get to the questions because that's what that's what everybody likes. The first the first question pertains to IPSC matches. I think the world shoot specifically, but uh, that's fine. It it works for any big IPSC match. Does the mixture of short, medium, and long courses affect your approach to the match? What do you think, Alex? Does that affect you? Well, I mean, this is that's how you live your life normally. Yeah. <laughs> Well, so I, I guess uh, the way to ask you is, if you go to a USPSA match, does it all being long courses affect your approach to the match? It doesn't. Well, I mean, it's different for sure in terms of strategy. Uh, long, long courses, you just, I don't know. Well, I just shoot USPSA matches sometimes, and it's fun to shoot long courses. But, I mean, it's really more the short courses where in a IPSC match, where you actually have to, uh, sometimes you have to survive a stage instead of just like really pushing and try hero zero. You just shoot shoot a short course and not try to go for a stage win, but you put all your effort for the long course and medium courses. That's usually how I do it. So and half I, the stages in the match being short courses, about half the stages, you just try to survive. Well, it depends. If a short course is pretty simple, I'll just, like, I'll go all in. But, like, if it's, like, two activators and uh, no shoots, that's usually when I try to just survive it. All right. But, hey, I'm, yeah. No, I, that makes sense. What do you think, it's, Nick? <laughs> so, you know, my experience with the, the IPSC format is limited to a couple of, or two or three US, you know, IPSC nationals in the U.S. But I, I'm kind of surprised. I was actually going to go kind of the opposite direction from Alex. So, you know, my impression based on this couple matches is that the 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 weight of the points in an IPSC style match is much more on the shooting portion. And you know, you really kind of got to make your money on the short and the medium courses. And to me, the long courses were more. You know, you got a lot more running. The shooting itself is a little bit easier. So, you know, people are more stacked up on the long courses, and you kind of had to to make a living on the short and medium courses. That's where you kind of kind of won or lost the match, in my opinion, when I was there. So, to me, it it's it puts more weight on the actual shooting itself. Like any shooting deficiency on a short course, you just get hammered in the results. So I'm hearing you saying that IPSC is gay. Uh, yes. No. No, it's cool. it, it's a different experience. Uh, I I do not care for the for the lack of walkthrough. I I have not warmed up to that. You know, I, I know it's probably normal for people who shoot internationally all the time, but I I don't like that aspect of it. But the variability in the in the course size and the shooting challenges, I think, is is can certainly be a very positive aspect. Whereas you know in the U.S. A lot of matches you have, you know, 
you know, 32 round long courses where you just run around squirting bullets and yeah. So from that aspect, I thought the Ipswich matches were, were nice. In the base, for sure. Okay. So when I look at this question, does the mixture of the state, the stages affect your approach to the match. For me personally, not really, but it's because I'm used to. I have I I would say I have a different mentality than most guys I know in USPSA. So you know, most guys, they're like, well, this stage is only 40 points, so it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. safe. This is a short course. This is irrelevant. And I kind of look at that. I've always been like. Why the fuck? Like, if I'm going to look at my match summary at the end of the match, I'm like, a miss on this stage is going to bother me just as much on a miss as any of the other ones. So, did, like, I've never thought of it as, you know, different as far as, like, how many rounds are on the stage is not relevant to me. I don't really care. I want to shoot every round good. Does that make sense? Yeah. So yeah. I, don't, I don't look at a short stage ever in, in any kind of match. You're like, oh, this is a short one, so it doesn't matter. Actually, uh, just thinking about it, uh, usually the short course, you want to like make sure you get like a good solid draw fast and like a solid reload if there is one. But actually in Ipsic, there won't be one. Not unless you're in Canada or Australia. Yes, exactly. We're just always reloading. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so you're on a short course, you really want, that's where you're going to get like that second faster uh, by getting like a solid fast reload, uh, solid fast draw and good transitions. Except like compared to a long course where you probably have plenty of time to draw and run to your first position. Well, you think that, right? But do you really? No, of course, you're always drawing fast. Yeah. All the time. You have to run your first position. <laughs> The draw is a smaller, a smaller percentage of your overall time on a long course, regardless. Yeah. Right? But on a short course, you screw it up. Like that little elemental piece of screwing it up doesn't hurt you as bad as it does on a short course. Yeah. Yeah, not it doesn't hurt you in, as bad in terms of percentage on the stage, yeah. but it hurts you the same in terms of match points. Just because you have more points on the yeah, big stage. Pro yeah, provided that the hit factors on the stage are the same. Yeah, so I'll add one caveat to my, my earlier point. So there's so many short courses in Ipsic that, you know, if you're screwing up one of them, you're, you're probably going to screw them up multiple at once. So, like, you know, whatever, if you have some kind of deficiency, it's probably going to be borne out in multiple stages. It's probably going to hurt you across all those stages and not just one for the most part. Yeah. So, I, I mean, for me personally, no, it doesn't really affect my approach to the match. I can see, like, I can see why people want it to affect their approach to the match, but that's mostly if we're talking to a USPSA audience, it'd be because the the typically the the, the couple short stages in a match, they're like, oh, these ones don't matter. And then if you're talking to, I guess, IPSC guys, they'd be they'd be thinking that the the long courses, like, well, the running soaks up all the shooting or something, so it's not as important there. Like I, I, mathematically, it doesn't matter. Like, it's it's weighted on points and time, and that's it. It doesn't really matter much. Like how when that, you think about that it, works out. Yes. Like when you think about it, world shoot. They had like five long courses. Yes. And like how many short courses? Like fifteen. No, it's six <laughs> long courses, I think. No, six, five. Sorry, five. Uh, it was You're five, right. five areas. It was yeah. five, fifteen, and ten. Yeah. So I mean. The short courses don't matter. It's 15 of them. If you stack them up, it, ma it starts mattering. <laughs> well, that and it's like if you're running in a tight race with people, like let's say you're within five or ten points of guys you're competing against, you're going yeah. into a stage with 40 points available on it versus <laughs> going into a stage with 150 points available on it. Does that really matter to you? How many points are available? No. Not well, I mean. You want to get as many as you can to try and make <laughs> points on the other guy. Yeah. It doesn't make any damn. It, may, it doesn't make any difference. I I wouldn't think, and I'm I'm happy to report that it doesn't really affect my approach to the match. Maybe as far as training. So let's say before the match, then it's different. So for USPSA, you're working on sort of how much horsepower you have on big stages with lots of shooting and running, because that's going to matter a lot. Yeah. The so, hosing. Yes, <laughs> maybe some hosing, yes. Or for, for the no-shoot nationals coming up, at least that's what it looks like on paper. 
you just set up a bunch of partial targets and like shoot them a bunch, reload, shoot them a bunch some more, work on moving around a little bit, that'll be pretty good practice. But if you're going into an IPSC match, you'd want a lot of diverse sort of training. Being yeah, honest. I agree. Okay. Let's move on to the next question. I recently, I think I was at this match actually. I recently shot a level two match and shit the bed on two stages. One stage had 45 yard poppers and the second stage had weekend only partials. Two skills I rarely practice. So here's this question. Am I a retard for being so bad at these two skills? And should I train them up? Or do you and the pundits say, fuck that noise, ain't nobody got time for that? <laughs> Nick, you look confused. <laughs> I'm trying to decide exactly what, what skills he's trying to define here. All right, so. No, so he's defining it as, ex <laughs> if I'm reading the tea leaves here, I think it's exactly as he wrote it. So 45 yard poppers. All right, so pulling and, the trigger. And we can't only partials. Now, you think of that as pulling the trigger, and he thinks of that as 45-yard partials <laughs> or poppers. You know what I mean? It's just all in how you look at it. Yeah. Should you train with 45-yard poppers? No, not necessarily. <laughs> but you should train to hit stuff. You should train to shoot little things far away. That's helpful. And yeah. do you need to have partial targets we can't only? No, I don't. maybe not. But should you be proficient in hitting the center of the target weekend only? Yeah, that's a good thing to do. I would say. Right? <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's all in how you look at it. And as far as like not training for it, it's just noise. <laughs> I mean uh maybe for USPSA, but that's This was a USPSA match. Well it wasn't noise at this match, was it? <laughs> <laughs> no, they weren't. This was a not fucking around stage. That I mean, the match was quite diverse. There was plenty of hosing. Don't worry about that. But there was also we can't only partial targets like zebra targets, and with uh, Virginia count, so no extra shots. Yeah, uh, that's that's rough, man. It was rough. A lot of people's mm. uh, buttholes got pulverized a little bit. I was at a match earlier this year where it was kind of the same thing, you know. Uh, they had a stage like that and tons of people crashed and burned. You know, I, during the walkthrough, I was like, "This here's a stage that's going to separate, you know, the men from the boys who, who train on this kind of thing. And sure enough, so, yeah, it all matters, you know. You're not going to – there's no excuses here. So. Suck it up, buttercup. Damn, Nick. <laughs> Damn, that's rough. <laughs> But, uh, all right, what I would say to this guy... Both of those things are just trained to shoot small things. I mean, a 45-yard popper is just a you know, mini popper at 20 or whatever. You're, you're shooting a small target. No, they, had, not... they were actually minis at 45. Ooh, uh, that's pretty brutal, but... Yeah, yeah. it was minis awesome. Minis 45, Ooh. that is strong. That's bold. Let me just say that before I shot that stage, I was, like, taking a couple extra magazines and put them in my back pocket. You know, <laughs> Before I this stage, like I don't know how this is gonna go. Let's get some extra ones on there. Did you you shot the match or you were there? No, I shot the match. It was Iowa section. Okay, a mini popper at forty five. That is that is tough. It was forty forty five paces. My so maybe I don't know maybe forty one yards or something. I don't know how long my step count is. It was far as fuck. It was it was serious. <laughs> That is, that is serious. I've, that's beyond any shot that I've, I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, These guys are uh, stepping it up a notch. I appreciated that it was steel. I can say that. <laughs> really? It was like, it was a long time. So you'd go. Poof, ding, like it was. But I think, uh, it was, wasn't it? Uh, there was one range that I think had shots or I don't even know if it was a match, but they had shots similar to that. And they're like, you know, we learned one year. So we had to wait there, you know, half the field to spend 20 seconds emptying two magazines at these little pieces of steel we had out there. So the next year we just made a paper and they would take two shots and move on. They're either going to get them or not. But Yeah. Well, what again, what I say to this guy is don't think about it too hard. Like work on hitting little things far away. Work on being able to hit the center of targets weekend only. Um, yes, these, these are good things. To, these are good things to be helpful at. And it's like, if you want to be 
Uh, well, this this guy sent his his a link to his scores, and I look at his scorecard for every stage. I'm like, yeah, it looks pretty good, but these couple stages you tanked on, you tanked pretty fucking hard. And the difference between a guy who goes to matches and does pretty good, and a guy who goes to matches and has a chance to win them is, you train on all the stuff, and you don't walk around. A, a good rule of thumb that I like to tell people is. You walk around the match, you look at all the stages, and there's nothing you feel like you can't do. You know, like you feel like I feel pretty comfortable with all this. And if you're the type of guy that's competitive and you want to do well, if you you're gonna know inside, you can't lie to anybody about it. You're gonna know if you walk up to a stage like, oh man, I'm not prepared for this. Like I know I can't do this. And then the pressure level is gonna go up, and then you're really gonna fuck it up. All right, now answer me this, because you were there, you saw the stage. What, yeah. was the, what was the approximate hit factor for this stage? Which stage? This one with the, for, it's for a 45-yard mini popper. Oh, it was a 32 no, round. We're doing math oh. to see if you had to hit that sucker, if you were just going to throw around and roll off. It was a 32 rounds all steel stage. I mean, with iron sight guys shooting it in like about 30 seconds was really good. So it was like maybe a five-factor stage if you nailed it. So three seconds to leave a popper standing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> three seconds. Yeah, you so probably gonna shoot in three seconds. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, but it, it was no joke. It was a hard stage. There was a lot going on there. <laughs> that's why I say, like, that's one of those stages where I'm like making sure I've got some magazines in my back pocket. I'm like, oh, fuck, I only have five pouches. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think I need some more ammo. There's swinging plates. There's all kinds of shit happening. I there. think in three seconds, you're probably going to have to shoot that thing if you if you want to win the stage. Yeah, I mean, you're going to shoot at it. At three seconds, yes. Well, but, then it's like, I'm just going to shoot it. I'm just going to shoot it down regardless. I don't care. Man. You better know you, your your sights better be on. You better be able to pull the trigger. Your 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 trigger pull and your gun has to be perfect for that shot. That wasn't really my strategy. I want more like accuracy by volume, <laughs> but uh, yeah. I'm not sure that's the right strategy. <laughs> I mean, if I think there's a lot of shooters that should probably consider in that on that shot. There's probably a lot of shooters that are going to benefit from throwing around it and moving on. Not that people are going to win this. Uh, there was a couple guys on my squad that was tragic. They ran their open guns empty. Yeah. On those things. See, that's, and I was that's, like, not a, yeah, that's not. That's I not would, so good. But I mean, if you don't think you can make that shot, or if you know you can't make it, and there's going to be a lot of people in the field that that's going to impact, then you need to throw around it and move on. And the but, other thing you need to do yeah. is practice hitting little things far away. Yes. Like that's more the long term solution rather than eating misses. Yes. Yes. I'm talking Jesus about Christ. bad day on, on the day while you're there, you're not getting better right then. I'm talking about strategy when you're staying there. Yes. Long term strategy is learn to hit little things. <laughs> yes. yes. Like, learn, yeah. learn, you're, learn, you're learn to you're hit strong. the things. That's pretty brutal though. That's a long shot. Yeah, I, I thought the, it was it was far. It was quite far. Yeah. I, I've seen full size poppers that 42 and it wasn't that hard but i've i've never seen a i don't think i've ever seen a shot like that in a match that i can think of yeah hmm. all right i shot uh, area four this year in one stage uh, when the ro's were activating moving targets they simply yanked on the cable rather than hitting the popper so you can see the timing when i requested on the next one they were going to activate they hit the popper they just said that's the way we're doing it um, I was first up to shoot the stage, so I never got to see the timing on the movers. As a result, I lost a bit of time and felt poorly about the situation. Okay. The next day, I was talking to another shooter and said, and he said that when he shot the stage on the second day, the ROs hit the popper to activate the movers. Thoughts? And so some questions he asked, grounds for a reshoot, competitive equity issue. Should I have some of the match director? Who cares? You saw enough, he says. Oh, looks like you got RO fucked. <laughs> All right, you're good. So what's your thoughts on this, Alex? I mean, that's that's not fair. <laughs> like, either they activate it, well, they have to activate it by the proper first. So, like, the ROs 
was wrong on that one. And the, the fact that they, like, so it's an area four, so it's a big match. It's not even just a level one. So the next day, they activated with the popper. So it's like, not even like competitive equity. I would say, yeah, I would say throughout the stage. Damn, you're bringing that in? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> like, if, if I was the guy first and like it fucked all the timing, well, <laughs> I don't know. Did it fuck the timing that, that much? I'm not sure, but yeah, definitely. <laughs> Anyways, it was just the whole situation was bad, I, I think. No, it's not, it's not good that they're doing it differently on different days. Not good. Nick, what do you think? I mean, so, you know, RO should strive for consistency above all else, no matter what. But in this case, I'm going to say that, look, you're not learning the timing of a mover from them, you know, throwing the popper down. When Thank I go, God, Nick. Yes. Yeah. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> they, they're throwing the popper down or they're tapping or whatever they're doing. It's not going down at the same speed that your bullet is sending it down, okay? So you're not learning the timing during the walkthrough from the RO activating the thing, no matter what he does, you're not. There's no, it. yeah, exactly. And even uh, if he does it, there's no way you should trust yeah. it. <laughs> right. So you're, all you're doing is getting a look at where that target's going to be, like the, the visual, like range, like wh where am I going to see that target? How much of that target am I going to see from the shooting position? That's all you're seeing there. If you want to see timing, you need to go there the day before. You need to watch other people shoot it with your power factor of ammo and like watch about five shooters shoot it because even depending on the popper but even between shooters shooting the same power factor it may go down a little differently every time so you know if you want to get a real sense of the timing you need to be there before the day before you need to see people with your similar type of ammo shooting it and you see multiple people shooting it you're not learning anything about the timing the day of and right? ideally you watch people of a similar skill yeah. level exactly yeah so you know if you're if you're in the unfortunate situation of being you know, first up on a stage that you don't know the timing of, and A, if this is a major match, you know, ask yourself, is, if, is there a way I could have avoided being in this situation by showing it the day before? <laughs> and B, you better shoot it just a way that you're 100% confident you can execute it, because I'd rather lose a little bit of time there than, you know, eat a mic or two or whatever the downside is. Like, I, you know, it, it's not a good situation, but I would err on the side of just executing it in a, in a manner that I know I'm going to be successful in getting all the hits rather than, you know, trying to, to go for some hero plan that I'm not sure I could, you know, you could crash on. So that, my advice would be, A, don't get in that situation, but if you find yourself in it somehow, just execute a safe plan, get it done, and just move on to the next one. Uh, I mean, just to reiterate what Nick's saying, you're not learning the time of anything. So if, like, I put myself in this guy's shoes, like, if I see the RO pull the cable and not, slam down the popper, it wouldn't bother. Personally, I wouldn't give it a shit because I'm not learning anything watching the popper fall. Sure. Instead, I would I could look at how big is the popper, how much slack is there in the cable, and that's going to tell me more than what watching what the RO is doing. If I don't, if I truly don't know the timing, if I didn't sort of do the homework, you know, like I, I wouldn't care that the RO pulls the cable because I know that watching the RO hit the popper down doesn't tell me anything anyway. Um, but as far as the competitive equity issue, like if I'm again, if I'm in this guy's shoes, that wouldn't have even crossed my mind. I would just think like, huh, that's a weird RO. Like, like <laughs> that's this is the way we're doing it. Like, be like, whatever. <laughs> like, yeah. Don't care. You know, done um, every way, and it's it's never even crossed my mind. That it yeah. Could be, yeah. Know, and then the other thing is, I, experience has taught me in a situation like this. They're never going to throw out the stage. You're going to look like a fucking little bitch if you try to get a reshoot. <laughs> Nothing about this is going to be good to complain about it. Like this, like I'm all about picking a fight when people are really getting fucked over. Like this is not a fight I would pick. <laughs> I would not choose this hill to die on. Like just like let yeah. this one, like trust me, let this one go. Because the R the range master is not going to throw the stage. Maybe he talked to the range officer about it. Maybe, probably not. Like they're they're not going to do shit about this. 
because there's yeah. what the there's what the rule book says, and then the reality is like if it's one of these things, and it's like, yeah, it's not a big deal. Then it's not going to be a big deal, and it doesn't matter that the walkthrough was like by the rule book was inconsistent. They're not going to care. Nobody's going to care. Is there even a rule about this? Well, the, yeah, the, the the stage briefing has to be consistent, hundred percent. Okay. Well. I mean, I, I don't think it explicitly well, says they have to activate the prop in the same manner every time. Or even like, if they tried, even if that's a rule, they couldn't. It's like literally impossible to do that. Well, I mean, how about gonna, this? A little this, bit harder sometimes than other times. What, it what this is like is, um, so let's say there's a, a like a partial target on a stage, like a tuxedo target or something like that, and. When the ROs put the stage up that morning, somehow, some way, the target ended up four inches lower on the stand than it otherwise would have. They just yeah. put it up four inches lower. That's, and then that's when, an they change, when they change targets at lunch, like the, they notice, like, oh, this one's too low, and they move it up four inches higher. Nobody's going to give a fuck about that. <laughs> By the rules, they can throw the stage. <laughs> but nobody will care. Like if, if I was the range master and I'm like, I'm a pretty big competitive equity guy. I would just like kind of shrug my shoulders and wouldn't say nothing. I wouldn't and you're assuming this target's at some kind of range and the, the, you know, the available shooting Yeah, area. like let's say it yeah. doesn't matter yeah. a whole lot. I just look at that. That's one of those things where it's like the rule book says one thing, but then in practical terms, um, you'd end up throwing out a lot more stages if you uh, rigidly adhered to the rule book. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're saying they're going to make sometimes they're going to make a judgment call, and if the, if the you know the differences aren't significant enough to impact. I, impact I, I, let me put it this way: I've been on the super squad at nationals when we're allowed to shoot the stage one way, and guys on the next squads are said, told they are not allowed to shoot the stage that way. <laughs> like you are not allowed to do what those guys just did. Yeah. Like that—that's the uh, world we live in. So. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is bullshit. I mean, that should be. Yeah, possible. it's total bullshit. But what does that matter? Like, you're not hearing me. It, like, I mean, nobody's going to care. You know, you have to make a little bit of judgment call about the actual competitive equity impact. I mean, if we're talking a stage plan, it's completely disallowed between one spot and another. That's totally different than. Yeah, it's crazy. Moving a target one inch that doesn't impact anything else about the stage. Yes, and in this situation, so competitive equity wise, watching the RO slam the popper down onto the ground. That's not telling you anything anyway. I, so, I might have, uh, yeah, I might have overshot it a little bit. Though. <laughs> it is not a, that is not a competitive equity issue. End of story. Yeah. No. yeah least, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, to have them pull the pull yeah. the cable one day, and like knock the popper down another, like that is they're not doing it the same. Like right. I understand the guy's got a legitimate beef. The problem is the beef is really minor. And it's not something that you're going to argue about. I wouldn't recommend it. If this guy was on my squad and he like wanted to go back and argue next to me, like, bro, you are pissing up a rope. Don't do that. <laughs> like, they're not going to remember your score on this stage. Nobody's going to give a fuck about who wins this match next year. But they're going to remember you. I can promise you that. And they aren't going to like you. Just not. Uh, it's not the place to learn the timing. You're not learning the timing. There, yes, you are not learning the timing. I, his beef is legitimate. Like, I understand his, his gripe here. He's like, hey, you're not showing me the thing. You know, I get it. But they wouldn't really show him the thing anyway. If this guy slams the popper down or taps it really light or something, you're not really seeing the timing. No. Um, the solution to the problem there is go the day before, if you can. Go the day before and watch people shoot it. Or if you know you're first up on the next stage, you know, maybe just kind of like, take a look during lunch or something or like maybe if you wander over there like just see it one time or something like that if you can that's a good thing to do sometimes pasting is overrated hey if you're first up like <laughs> as far as i'm concerned three shooters before yeah. it's your time to shoot you go yeah. do what you have to do I, I don't think less of people who are first up on a timing type stage and they walk off after the shooting I, I got no problem with that i'll paste all the targets he needs me to yep all right. Well, guys, it's a bang up job. Another wonderful podcast. Thank you so much for coming on. Nick, Alex. Yeah, All right. Well. Listener people, if you have a question you'd like the answer to, 
go to bensteger.com, send me your question. We'd love to hear it. 